Hey there, scabbies, scummers, and gangers. Crimson Oracle here, and uh, doing another episode in my Battlefield on a Budget series. This time, we're going to be talking about how I made this. Pringles Can Terrain, and the importance of how you can make your Pringles Can Terrain not look like a Pringles Can. Uh, I think that it's something that I probably have hang-ups about from having interacted with people who are more particular about terrain um, than than I necessarily am. Uh, not to say that, you know, I'm not particular about terrain because uh, if you actually look at the terrain I make, I'm extremely picky about how I do it. But uh, I really enjoy, you know, the kind of uh, free and, uh, you know, on a relatively achievable <laughs> standard uh, kind of terrain and that's just something that you know some people find things to complain about and so I've heard a lot of people say like oh you can't use a Pringle terrain you can't use a Pringle scan because you're always gonna have that seam you know it's ugly and there are ways around that so you're gonna see a bunch of info about that in this video uh, this has been a, a fun project so far. I've already made a, a bunch of terrain and the end goal, uh, once I've completed everything, is to have a, a box of terrain that I can leave somewhere. Um, so, uh, specifically, uh, I'm hoping to make it available at the location that I've been playing at lately as um, I think that they would benefit from having some store terrain. Uh, and I am interested in potentially uh, doing another board after this, um, but I am going to hold off until I've done some of the preliminary work on uh, getting that project started, uh, which I think first means getting all of this junk fully converted and uh, off of my uh, printing desk. So, <laughs> um, Next uh, video I'm going to be putting up this week will be a rundown of the various Necromunda factions and how they tend to play on the tabletop. Um, I think that it will be helpful for people who are just getting into the game and looking to figure out exactly who they want to play. Um, so look forward to checking that out. And of course, don't forget to like and subscribe and uh, hit the little bell button so that you can actually see my posts when they go up as opposed to waiting for YouTube to show you. And, um, you know, I'm, with that, I'm going to uh, go ahead and get into building this wonderful Pringle Scan terrain. To start this video out, we're going to see how I make very inexpensive base bottoms for terrain. I got this trick from the How to Make War Games Terrain book uh, that I'm sure so many of us read as kids. Uh, you glue the individual pieces of cardboard together. This will create a rigid surface that you can build on. It will be much less likely to warp due to the thickness of the piece. Now you're going to come in and you're going to bevel the edges. Now it does not have to be perfectly neat. Um, I'm not using my best knife for this because I was not able to find the box cutter knives that I have. Um, but I recommend using a very sharp box cutter blade to cut through the corners and to create, you know, a somewhat organic looking shape. The, once the base is done, we cut the bottom of the Pringles container off, or I guess the top of the Pringles container, but it's the new bottom. And then we glue it down with super glue. I make sure to get it all around and I use accelerant so that it dries nice and quickly. This next step is what makes this build really nice. Uh, you are going to come in with wood filler or spackle um, and you're going to coat the edges of the cardboard. Make sure you get it into the corrugation. This is going to dry nice and hard and it is going to provide a nice solid weight at the base. Next, I'll work the filler up along the surface of the Pringles tube. This will fill in the paper and uh, it kind of hardens the exterior a bit too. Uh, I find it's very helpful. And now I will be cutting a platform to go onto the side. I find it's important to have 
steps up on your terrain so that it doesn't just serve as a vertical obstacle or a sniper point, but it could also be used to traverse. Next, I'm going to be using strips of corrugated paper here to create ladders. Uh, this is one of the many ways that you can do a quick and simple ladder on terrain. Uh, you just glue, it, glue down some corrugated strips in that sort of uh, horizontal pattern, and boom, you've got a climbable area, which is nice because there's uh, you know a lot of work that goes into making the different climbing surfaces. <laughs> Now I'm going to be using cardboard to panel out this build along with more of the corrugated paper. Uh, I often will use plastic card rather than cardboard, but this build is partially about doing it as inexpensively as possible. Uh, so I'm using the most inexpensive option. And now I am adding the nail beads. Uh, They're these little uh, circular nail beads that you can apply and they look like rivets. I put down glue and then I use a scalpel to place them on the paper. Get everything glued down. Now, once things have dried a bit, I come in with the texture paint. Of course, I'm slowly distracted by rivets once again. Anyhow, now I put the texture paint down along the edges, filling in the gaps where I used super glue to strengthen the super glue. And of course, all over the corrugated paper as the PVA soaks into the paper and dries it. I always do the undersides of everything because those things are supposed to have texture too. And it's easy to forget about, even Games Workshop kits sometimes. And I get in there and just cover the whole thing with that extra bit of grime. Now, just as an aside, I happen to have this Triceratops skull that I 3D printed uh, as a test print when I got my printer for the first uh, the first print or so. And I'm going to go ahead and make a similar base for it. And this is going to be some scatter terrain. Uh, I'm going to do a few different kinds of scatter terrain to go on these boards. And uh, I thought I'd just throw one in on this video too. And so it's pretty easy. I, I chip it apart. I, I glue it down, I do the exact same process with the base to make a flat surface, and I will then come in with the exact same wood filler that I was using before to line the edges and get in there and secure everything together, fill in a little bit of the distance between the surface and the model so that it feels like it's kind of buried in an ash mound. Of course, once the spackle has dried, you come in with the texture paint once again, getting everything. This is a nice way to smooth out print lines too. Back to the original build. I'm coming in here with popsicle sticks in order to produce some railings. I find that railings are something that's good to add in small quantities to your builds. Uh, they are very nice for creating areas of cover and upper levels, making it more likely that squishier people will go exploring the higher levels of your boards. But at the same time, uh, they make your terrain a little bit more unwieldy, easier to break. So I try to kind of strike a balance. Uh, and so for this build, I will just be putting a balcony on the top level. Of course, more rivets. Ta-da! 
and secure it. Now, of course, we prime everything. Um, I recommend using whatever primer is best for you, whether that's an airbrush or your uh, rattle can, whatever works best. You could even do this with, you know, brush on primer if you were so inclined. As always, after doing either a black or a gray undercoat, I come around from above with a spray of white to highlight. And of course I come in with craft paint that I water down with a bit of flow improver uh, to create a nice smooth but very inexpensive undercoat of brown. You could also use an ink for this, uh, a nice dark uh, burnt umber or something in that range would do really well. And I just go through and paint the whole thing. And I, I put it on pretty thick. You know, this is all kind of paper all underneath. So the PVA, you know, the, the acrylic in the paint and in the glue that we use are going to get in and harden and help to reinforce and strengthen this terrain. It takes a little while to do it all by brush. It would be faster to do by airbrush, but I like to do my tutorials in a way that anyone who is interested can do them, not just people who have an airbrush. Ta-da! And now I come in with an orange. This is Pueblo orange from Folk Art Acrylics. Uh, and I go on real gloppy. And now I come in with some silver and I kind of make a messy bit of silver, especially along the outsides, doing kind of a, a dry brushing motion with a wet brush. And now I will come in and do the bone on the skull. And I'll do both the bases in a brown that I actually mixed from a bone color and the brown that I used. And that gives me kind of a creamy brown because that's sort of the color that I've been using for ash waste stuff, uh, as you'll see in a moment. And now I come in with a black wash that I make out of a mixture of medium, water, and ink, and a little bit of flow improver. I like to make it myself because I use it in really large quantities. Uh, I'll show how I make it in another episode, uh, but you could use uh, Vallejo oil spill or Nuln oil or any other company's dark black wash for this step. While the wash is still wet, I'll come in with sprinkles of a uh, European earth pigment from Vallejo along both the bases. And then I'll come in with the desert color pigment and I'll mix that with wash in order to make a textured paint of sorts. The medium in the wash helps to fix the paint. And then when I come back around with an airbrush to do varnish, it will take care of that. You can varnish this by brush as well, but I recommend going slow and using capillary action on the brush. And there you have it, a Pringles can tower that does not have a discernible seam and is covered in all kinds of groovy details that were easy and inexpensive to do. This is exactly the kind of project that I'm looking for for these builds. Thank you so much to my patrons. You guys make doing this show uh, so much fun. And I am just so glad that I have the opportunity to uh, make this cool content. And of course, if you're interested in supporting the show, you can be a patron for as little as $5 a month. You even get access to podcast episodes early and you get your name in the credits. And of course, don't forget to check out the podcast domerunners.buzzsprout.com. 
and everybody stay safe and don't forget to change your paint water. <laughs>